Now that we've seen how to form t-tests, let's actually use the analysis of variance and general linear tests to form similar hypothesis tests about the regression parameters. Now, in our one predictor linear regression model, our principal interest will be on that slope parameter, that is, estimating whether in the population we have evidence the slope between y and x is different from zero. So here is our sample data, and let's actually add in a little bit on the side, which is the variability in the y-axis. Now I want you to notice that this is what we're seeking to explain with our model. That is, there are differences among people in the final exam score, and we want to, on the basis of our model, try to explain those differences. So in the same way we formed an analysis of variance before, we're going to be seeking to explain some sums of squares, specifically sums of squares total. That is, the total amount of deviations in the y-axis. So the yi's minus the y-bar squared. So just like before, we'll have a sums of squares total. And what we're going to do is break apart those sums of squares total into two pieces. The first part we've seen before, sums of squares for error. So the deviation between an individual's actual score and what is predicted by the model for them. And what we'll do is across all individuals, take the sum of those squared deviations. Now you'll notice we're missing a piece in this model the deviations between what is predicted for an individual and the grand mean. And those, in a regression model, are called the sums of squares regression. And the sums of squares regression, just like the sums of squares for treatment, are capturing the effect of our x variable. Let's actually look at this in a diagram, and hopefully it'll be more clear how the sums of squares regression is sensitive to whether there is actually anything predictable in y on the basis of x. Let's start by representing the total deviations for two of the students. I'm going to first actually draw in y bar, and here I'm going to label the x-axis at x bar. So let's start with Tom. Tom was the first person in the data set, so he is y1. And Tom scored very high, so above the mean. So what I'm showing here is Tom's total deviation. Let's choose another student, somebody who actually studied very little and also scored below the mean. So this was Gloria, y5. And this is Gloria's total deviation. So what we'll be forming from these total deviations across all people is the sums of squares total, the total amount of deviations we can hope to explain in y. Let me extend the y-bar axis across, and let's next consider the error deviation. That is, the difference between these individuals' actual y-scores and what is predicted for them on the basis of our model. So let me actually bring the model in. Here was the linear regression line. And let me extend across y1 and y5. So the error deviation for Tom is going to be the difference between Tom's actual score and what is predicted for Tom. That is, when this line is at 11 hours of studying, what would it predict an individual would get on the final exam? For Gloria, Gloria's deviation is, just like it is for Tom, a deviation between her actual score and what is predicted for her on the basis of the number of hours she studied. So we have two parts of our model so far, the total deviation, and we've broken out the error deviation. So what we have left is the regression deviation. And notice that this deviation will be between what's predicted by the line and the grand mean. So for Tom, Tom's deviation for regression is the degree to which this line is above the grand mean. And for Gloria, Gloria's deviation will be the degree to which the line is below the grand mean. Notice that if the regression deviations were zero, that could only happen if the line were perfectly flat. That is, if the line was exactly coincident with y bar. So to the degree there are regression deviations, that means that this line has a slope. So the regression deviations and the sums of squares for regression are literally capturing the degree to which this line has a slope and every individual gets to contribute a regression deviation. Just like in a mean structure model, everybody got to contribute a treatment deviation. Now with these error and regression deviations, we can form an f-test for the simple regression slope. Just like we did before, we'll form mean squares. So sums of squares regression divided by the degrees of freedom regression divided by sums of squares error divided by degrees of freedom error. And this yields for us a mean square for regression, just like a mean square for treatment, divided by the mean square for error. 
So just like before, we'll get an F test. And from the F test, we can derive a p-value. Notice that this test is specifically for the regression slope. We're not forming an F test for the intercept in the model. In order to form an F test for the intercept, we'll actually have to use the general linear test form, something we'll come back to at a later time.